Okay, I wanted to make this tutorial about PF Track. Yeah, rather than using the automatic thing, it's basically I have. To, I've been trying to improve using the user tracks because I watched some other tutorials and there were some things that I was unaware of that I thought was worth sharing. Go to your project thing, click the plus, give it a name, path name, plus, and then go OK. So that's fine. And then go to your, and then that'll come up with your node stuff. And they've got this new I/O tab. People aren't, there's not many tutorials on it. So you want to go clip, drag that in to your node flow, and then it will come up, and then you need to import it here. It will, uh, so locate your media there. So yeah, if we go back to the nodes, so I just might as well just do another one. Sorry, nodes, tracking, user tracks. So I found, so I just kept, they kept drifting for me whenever I was using the user tracks. And you only, and also I wanted to do like a six point track, right? How would you do that? What I did basically is track the, the corners of the buildings and make it super, hold down option on the Mac and make it really specific. And that will go faster and it should stick. And also one of the most important things is use the every frame and I think we can get away we can leave everything else off let's try okay every frame means that the pattern the next pattern will, will be referred to the previous frame as well as the start frame will only refer to the start frame and obviously if there's a lot of movement and the thing is changing a lot then that will slip so that's why I was it was slipping for me before so let's go with that oh I'm at the end of the sequence let's go the other way also center view is useful because you can really see if the track slips because there'll be everything there'll be a horrible bump or something I recommend using that something else would is to maybe if you don't have the memory I'm getting an additional scratch hard disk that should hopefully remedy this situation but currently I can't seem to use the cache and because the Mac hasn't got very much memory on the graphics card yeah, we can only do it. You can see the little green area it's previewing. But this gets it to stick. This every frame business and limiting the area to somewhere very specific gets it to stick. Because I want to be able to recreate the corner of that building. Okay, so now we've done that corner. Let's do another corner. Let's do this one here. Great. I've done this. I've done, gone through this project a few times to try and... So there's a little bit of... Oh, this is all working out perfect, but it did take me a bit of finagling. Every frame, we're at the beginning, so let's go forward. And that should also similarly stick pretty well, hopefully, and not drift. Might have to create a new keyframe or put it to the shear. There's this deformation thing, and you can see it is deforming quite a bit, but the every frame thing really is the the important uh, setting and on this one did I just trying to remember let's take the center off I think I tracked a shadow if I remember correctly there was a parked car or a part, light car that had lights that doesn't move this white car here oh, there's this one here there we go crate and it will do the same thing again make it very small And we want to set it every, every frame. Let's go that way. Okay. That way. Also, I found obviously you can see it's caching. We've got the, had the end frames cached, so it goes quite quickly. So you can see the advantage of if you've got the memory or a scratch disk that you can, once you've cached it, it will blast through. But as I say, because I'm waiting on a external hard disk for the caching um, yeah we might just have to preview it this do it this way but you can see how fast it'd be to get six points and this seems to work better because I really want to nail down the corners of, of the buildings to the ground plane for let's say I wanted to do, do a reconstruction or something of the, of the city or the buildings so let's do another one there same deal Make it really specific, so I've got an option on the Mac. And that should work. Let's try. Go forwards. 
Yeah. Oh, we've got starting frame, let's put that to every, I think that's going to, that will do us. So then what we want is the put two on the buildings. And this can be from the start frame or the end frame or whatever. So let's start with the start frame and create. Oh, it doesn't, and it's stick anywhere. It doesn't really matter. That should work. I'm going to use the, let's try that, see what happens. Yeah, that's looking pretty good, I think. It's just when there's a lot of, when it changes a lot. And you can see that the, when it's when you've got a flat plane towards camera, like the f front of a building, it doesn't change a massive amount. So you don't need to you don't need to put the every frame thing. You can use the start frame. It can define the pattern once and try and fit the pattern. As whereas when you've got lots of things on the ground plane changing angles and everything, the every frame. Oops, he says. We just got. I just noticed we've got a thing there. I'm just decrease it a bit. Undo. Hold down Option. Just change the shape a bit. See if that does it. And reduce that. There we go. Right. Okay. And now we want another another building, another facing camera, something like that. Maybe a bit of have a bit of that in it and then the other way okay and then we'll go on to the camera solve next now this is a, probably a dji drone and because it's a, a, probably a dji drone it's probably a 24 millimeter equivalent lens but we'll just let it do its thing camera solve and then we go solve all and because it's six points, it should do it pretty quick. Okay, it has done it pretty quick, but you can see it's a bit wonky. Now, the reason this is the reason why I wanted to do these two points here, because with the or take camera, and then we go. Let's move that. We will select this one and set that to the origin, and then we'll press command and select this one, and we can set that to the Z axis and then click on the S. Oh god, that doesn't look quite right. That doesn't look quite right because we haven't set the lens. We've let it come up with its own lens. So let's try and insisting that we want the lens to be a 24mm lens. So it's it's reckoning it's the 32, which is wrong. And we'll put that known to 24. Solve. Okay, and then we go back to set. I'll put the set origin. Okay, I'm wondering if we can get away with rolling the the so that the the horizon is level. If that will fix stuff for us. So then we go rotate, and then we can just grab the handles. But also, um, since we have where that car is on the road is reconstructed, we can actually use the view here. This is quite a good trick in terms of we can see the providing the points being reconstructed well. Where it says one meter, you can see there's a little white dot. That is the car, I think. We select that. It'd be useful if it said that. Yes, it's updated. Oh, that's a bit laggy. So if we go front and then we want to try and I guess we could split the difference. Doesn't seem quite right. I had to stop the video. What I did is I <laughs> annoyingly say, say this is one great thing with PF track is it just it always saves, it's good and bad, it always saves where you are with things. And I, I man, as you see here, I've got it all to line up to the horizon. The points are very close to the, to the ground plane. And it was just basically manipulating these handles and uh, setting the origin. And so that, and seeing how the points, because you see here, if I went like this, how they spread apart. So I try and get them as flat as possible. And uh, yeah, just kept m manipulating it. So then it's completely flat. 
And so now that we have that, we can use things. Let's say you wanted to do a set ext extension. What's quite useful is to build like proxy geometry. And then when you export it out to your 3D program, you'll have geometry to build off. So what I'm going to do is go this one here. And we'll go with a box, let's say. It's also quite a good way to check the tracking. Is with just building. You can insert, you have to go move, insert test objects. But I find actually just getting a bounding box around a building, let's say, like I'm doing here, is equally good, if not better. Because it's actually you know, something that you want as opposed to a mushroom or something. As fun as a mushroom is. Okay, let's zoom in. But this is a pretty nifty tool. Nuke has, he calls it Model Builder, which is something very similar. Um, and 3D Equalizer doesn't have any anything like this, but you just export out empties or, or locators or whatever. This is, yeah, it's pretty good. Just for building simple stuff, you don't want to... If you want to do anything more complex, then yeah, do it in a proper modeling program. But this is a great way of, as I say, building sort of proxy geometry that you can use to do your set extensions off. So you usually you need only need about three, position it three times. Not all the points, just some of the points. And that is, I mean, you can zoom in and get more accurate, I suppose. But, but yeah, if you move one point, just check others because it all they have a, they all affect each other. So there we have a let's we try to play. See if it, how much it caches. If you actually look at the, you see there's a little bit of a gap at the bottom, but that's because the roof line has an overhang. I think they call it a cornice or something, or not exactly sure. But it's, as you can see, that's why at the bottom there's a little gap because at the top there's these overhangs. Um, okay, I think we're going to stop the video there. Oh, oh yeah, let's just do the export so you know how that works. My main thing was, can we do a six-point track? And the reason why I wanted to, do, the reason why six-point track is good, is if you use the auto track, it's sort of tracking across the whole scene generally. But sometimes, if you need something to be super accurate around a building, or if you're doing a set extension, it's good to put the tracking markers around where you need to put the CG. Or as close as or nearby, because then and with six points, you're definitely saying this is. But then you've got to make sure that your tracks are super clean and there's no noise in the 2D tracking. Okay, so on the export, so you have footage export. If we'd done, let's just do scene export, and you can see we've got trackers, you can export geometry. Does it? Oh, the geometry is not there. That's interesting. And you've got a Maya here, but it could be. You have a choice of. Output. Oh, here we go. After oh, that's for After Effects. So that's handy to know. Uh, so here are all the um, exports. I normally I used to do Collada, but I'm tempted to use like US, USD or Alembic. Um, just um, whatever I can get into Unreal is the is the. If I can get it into Unreal and Blender, and it's the same for, format, that's what I'll adopt. But in the past, because I've always rendered in cycles or in a 3d program not unreal I, I i would i would use the collider but now that I, I want to get into the using unreal um i think it's probably worth it going for usd for everything these days but uh, yeah and then you just hit export and do all the rest of it oh the scale yeah <laughs> yeah i haven't done this to real world scale i mean you could set to come up with the scale and and if you know the length of a building or the size of a car or something so that's on the export. I can't remember if I talked at the beginning. I don't think I did mention at the beginning the re my reasons. I've got a tracking job coming up. 3D equalizer is 65 euros a week. You can rent it for and that and PF track. Although I never realised this, is you can actually rent it per month for 25. It doesn't say this. I mean, it doesn't give you the price until you've you know jumped through all the hoops. But it's 25 pounds per month, so it's cheaper. And so I thought, oh, okay, I won't use 3D equalizer, then I'll, I'll use PS Track. Okay, that's it.